Hey guys and welcome back to my channel Appalachian Home Co. So in today's video we are going to be creating some sublimation designs using a program called Canva. Canva is one of my favorite design programs to use and it is by far the most easy and simple program just to create designs. You can pop them out super quick. It's got lots of templates you can use, lots of designs you can use. I'm going to be creating some designs for a garden flag today. You can just go to canva.com to go right into designing. It's absolutely free to use. You can go ahead and create yourself an account and just go ahead and start designing. I am using the pro version, which actually costs around $12 or $13 a month. Now that is totally optional. You, you can just use the free version to create your designs that way. But again, I'm using the pro version, so keep that in mind when um, you're watching this video. So the first thing you want to do after going to Canva and creating yourself an account, we're just going to go up here to create a design. Now I'm going to be designing for a garden flag. You just want to go into custom size. I'm going to be using a design that is a certain size in inches but if you're creating designs for t-shirts and things like that you want to be able to resize them very easily I would suggest using the pixels and then just creating a design that is about 2500 by 2500 or 3000 by 3000 pixels that's about the perfect size you would want to use when you're creating designs for things such as t-shirts but today I'm gonna to be working in inches so I'm gonna change my units to inches and then I'm just gonna top in 12 and a half in the width and tab over to the height and just type in 18 inches and that's going to be my design size. Now I can go ahead and jump right in to creating my design. The first thing I want to do is create a background. You're going to have a series of different icons. Um, you can use some templates or you can use clip art under your elements. But I'm going to go into background and just put a background on my canvas. So now there's a bunch of backgrounds you can use, but I'm going to look for a specific background. I'm going to be using this ship light background. So just go into your search box and I'm going to be typing in wood and it comes up with a whole list of just different photos of wood that you can use for a background. But I really like this first one. It's more of a ship light pattern. The only thing I don't like about this design is the color. So I'm going to change the color. This is kind of a beige color. So I'm going to go to my color box and just change this to white. And then I'm going to go to edit image. And I'm going to bring up the brightness just a little bit. And I'm also going to bring down the saturation. I want it just a little bit more gray than brown. You can bring up the contrast up or down to change the brightness as well. So the last thing I'm going to do to this image is just change the transparency. You can do that by going up here to this little icon and clicking that and I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. I just want it to show just a little bit on my background. So that looks pretty perfect. I'm happy with that. The next thing I'm going to do is actually add a honeycomb pattern to this background. So you want to go to elements and this is going to be where all your clip art and things like that are. Um, and you can just type in the search box anything you are looking for. So honeycomb is what I'm looking for. And there you have a whole um, list of images that you can select from. If you choose um, this little text that says graphics, it's only going to bring up clip art and it's going to filter out all of your photos. And so I like this honeycomb pattern here. I'm just going to click that and it automatically puts it onto your canvas. I just want to resize this. Double click and drag your image just to place it anywhere on your screen. You can also use your arrow keys to move it over. To resize, you want to select one of your little round handles. Double click and drag it out to whatever size that you want. I'm just going to size mine to fit over the corner of my background to about right there. You can also change the color of this in this color box. So I'm going to click on that and I'm just going to make this a little bit more orange colored. You can choose from a list of preset colors here or you can go into this little box with the plus to completely add a new color. I'm going to use this little color handle here just to drag this over. But you can just go through the whole rainbow and select a whole host of different colors. I'm going to do mine a little bit more of a golden color. So about right there. You can also type in a certain color number, a Pantone color number if you have that as well. Now I'm also going to change the transparency. I'm going to go to the transparency icon and just bring that down to about 27 
or 20, maybe around 30 percent. I just want it to barely show that honeycomb pattern. So I'm happy with that. The next thing I want to do is flip this to match this corner as well. So um, first I want to duplicate it, which is Control D if you are using a PC. It's going to be Command D if you're using an iMac computer. So I have this duplicated. Now I just want to flip it horizontal and then flip it again vertical. And I want to drag that down to match this corner. And that looks pretty good, so I'm happy with that background. I'm going to drag a box over everything I just created. I'm going to group it and I am going to lock it in place. That way I can uh, go ahead and add more images to this without accidentally moving this background um, out of place. So now I'm going to add my extra images. The next thing I want to add is a beehive in the center of my flag. So I'm going to go back to elements and type in beehive. And that again is going to bring up so many images. I'm going to filter through just the graphics. And I really like this beehive here. I think it's super cute. So I'm going to just click on that and it's going to put it directly onto my screen. Then I'm going to just resize it a little bit to make it just a little bit bigger. You can see these purple lines are popping up when I move an image. Those are super helpful. These are going to help you center your image to your canvas. It's also going to pull up some other purple lines that are dotted to give you relative positions to other images that you may have on your canvas. But for right now, I'm just going to center that. You can see how those two solid purple lines are crossed. That is the direct center of my canvas. I'm just going to leave it there for now. Next, I want to add some text. To do that, you just want to go to your text icon and click on that. And now I'm going to add a heading. To increase the size, you can change the font size up here. Or you can use this little round handle and just drag that out. And then I'm just going to double click and move this up a little bit to where I want it to go. Now to change the text, you just want to double click on your text and I'm going to type in hello there. And now I am going to change the font. Go over here to your font drop down box. Click on the arrow and I have a font that I really like to use. It's called Special Elite. It just looks like a typewriter font. So I really like the way that looks. I'm also going to change the color of my text by going into this color box up here at the top of the screen. You can go in just like we did for the background and select a whole new color. Or you can hit the little dropper icon and then go into your image and just select a color directly from your image. You can even go back in and fine tune this a little bit. So maybe about there, more of a golden orange. I'm happy with that. The next thing I want to do is I want this text to be curved around my image. I want to go into this little menu up here that says effects and then I'm going to scroll down to where it says curve and if I click on that it automatically curves the text. Now this is just a little bit too much of a curve so you can change that on this little scale. I'm going to drag mine out to about right there and I'm also while my text is still selected I'm going to select this little round arrow button and I'm just going to rotate it just a little bit. Okay, now I'm happy with that. I'm going to add one more effect to my text. I want a little shadow behind my text. So go back into effects and I'm going to create a drop shadow. So just select a shadow style and that creates just a little drop shadow. You can change the direction. Um, I'm going to bring mine up a bit and then I'm going to bring it out just a little bit so it's not so noticeable. You can also change the transparency of it to make it just a little bit lighter. Okay, so then I want to create another text box down here at the bottom that says Honeybee. So I'm going to go back into text and create another heading. For this, I'm going to use a script font. One of my favorites is called Brittany. And I'm also going to resize this to fit my design a little bit better. Just make sure the bottom of your design does not go off of your canvas. So I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. I'm going to change the color of my text. Um, whenever you use colors in your design, they're going to pop up here in your document color. So it makes it super simple 
to match colors when you're creating a design. That looks good. I'm also going to create effect on this text as well. So I'm going to go back to effects and I want to create just a lift. I want to lift this off the page just a little bit. So I'm going to create this lift style. And you can see that this kind of lifts that text and creates a 3D dimensional effect. Um, and I think I'll bring the intensity down just a little bit if it's too much. And now the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put in some little honeybees flying around just to finish this off. So I'll go back into elements. And now I'm going to type in just the word bee. And I love this little just outline of a bee here. And it's just going to pop it right onto your canvas. I'm going to move it over and resize it just a little bit. And these I'm just going to randomly place at different places all over my design. I'm also going to change the color of these to match my design. I actually might make these a bit darker. So I'm going to go in this plus box and just drop these down just a little bit darker. that looks super cute so I already have one design completely finished to download this all you do is go to share and download there's different ways you can do this you can go ahead and print your design if you want to but I like to download mine you definitely want to download this as a PNG I leave my transparent background off if you're just wanting to download like the hive portion then I would put on transparent background but since I want the background to print out with my flag I'm going to leave this unchecked so now I just want to download that and it automatically downloads into your downloads folder on your computer so you just go back into that folder grab your design put it up into whatever program you're printing from and you are ready to go and there I already have one completed sublimation design so okay. to print out my design I like to print all of my designs out in Inkscape I've just opened up a new document I have set uh, my page to US legal which is eight and a half by 14 and my display units are in inches so I'm gonna be printing this off on my eight and a half by 11 Epson printer that I set up for sublimation even though this is a huge design you can still print out larger designs using this method I'm gonna go into my folder and drag in the design that I downloaded from Canva. Now you just want to import the image just the way it is and you can see it imports perfectly. You want to check the sizing to make sure it was the size that we designed it to which is this this is close enough 12 and a half by 18. So to print this out I'm just going to use this little button here and flip it over 90 degrees and then I'm just going to be centering um, my image over my page whatever is showing on your page outline is what is actually going to print so I'm going to print this in three different sections I'm going to print this first then I'm going to be moving this over printing it again and moving it over and printing it again so I have my first print set up I'm going to go to file and print and then I'm just going to choose my Epson I'm going to change my preferences make sure that everything is set up right I have a sublimation setting already um, set up you want to make sure though that you mirror your image whenever you're printing sublimation so now I'm going to go ahead and print everything out here's my completed printed design you can see how good it came out I actually printed this on my Epson 2760 in eight and a half by 14 um, sheets of a sub sublimation paper and I just taped them together I cut off the edges and taped them together to create this 12 and a half by 18 inch design so you can definitely do that if you have the smaller printer now I'm going to sublimate this on these sublimation garden flags these actually came from Amazon so I'll link those in the video but we're gonna press this at 390 for 60 seconds and see how that turns out on those settings and I'm going to be using my Starcraft heat press 15 by 15 to do this
hope you guys really enjoyed this kind of video. If you do like these and would like to see more of these tutorials and design with me, let me know in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing and don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like this video. I'll see all of you back again soon in my next one.